Okay, it's your boy, come on heart, on the chart. It's Friday and we're going bar by bar, like always. So off the bat, I'm seeing these, uh, these tops. Boom. And um, a channel possibly going right over through there. Um, Another possibility is that it's maybe down here, but this is less confirmed. So I'll probably run with this for now until I, uh, oh, let me take off the, uh, let me take those off real quick. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm seeing this channel pre-market and we're kind of getting this micro uh, trend going the uh, other way, kind of like a pullback. Um, and you know, we're above the EMA, closing below it, moved past the previous swing. That deserves a line. Um, I would like to see the reversal pattern, but I still want to respect this just to be sure. So on this next bar, and I'm back in the, um, on the West Coast, so you know, we're getting started around 5.15 and the open is going to be 6.30. So this is that first entry to the high. Um, I'm not I'm not looking to buy this yet. And then you see how we get a very big just volatility bar. I think the uh, farm roll payroll um, or farm payroll, whatever that news report is, that came out around this time. So we got a really big just kind of noisy move. Um, and then, you know, this is an inside bar, so it's starting to go a little sideways, so I want to be careful. And um, this is like a second entry long, but once again, it's just kind of a range, so I'm, I'm definitely not looking to buy or sell any of this right now. And then we get another kind of inside bar, and that Short is just a first entry to the low, so there's not really a, a short you want to take. Um, and it works though, you know, and that's that's kind of interesting. And, and it's, you know, it's expected. There's a trend here. We got the two-legged pullback, and we're getting a move to the lows. I think what's interesting to see how close to a measure move we might get. Um, you know, so somewhere down there. Maybe we get close, but get a pullback. And at this point, um, you know, I want to see this pullback start to make higher lows and I want to buy it to test these highs. I'm still using this channel up in here, uh, but it's it's quickly looking more like a range. So I need to be careful. Got that push. You know, that's a nice that's a good push. I like to see that. And then um, you can see we're for sure going sideways at this point. So at this point, I really should have uh, maybe, let's go this way for now. I should have this line on the chart just so I can have an idea of my range, the working range. I don't, I don't love how that fits. Let's, uh, let's switch it up, actually. Lately, I haven't been able to get these lines straight, so I'll just use, I'll just use that. So, I mean, you know, really, I see something like this going on right now. But to be honest, at the time, I, I was just, I was keeping it a little tighter. Now, still expecting a retest of the highs. I just saw this as like a uh, pullback, and we're going to start trending higher from here. So, when we got this bar, this was the higher low. Um, I took that trade. It's, it's this one's aggressive, to be honest. This is too aggressive. It's it's inside bars. Only thing that made me like it is that see how we're kind of moving lower. So my entry was down here and I could exit my scalp, you know, right at these highs. So I, I liked that. Um, and like I said, I'm still expecting this trend to uh, get a retest. So my bias was still bullish, but, you know, this is clearly congestion. So probably too aggressive. So I entered there. 
Um, and you can see, you know, we're like seven minutes away from the open. So it's kind of aggressive as well for that reason. And I was able to exit on that, uh, on that range line. And then I still had a runner contract. So I, I made a management mistake because given the context of this range, I needed to scalp out of both contracts. I shouldn't have, I should not have been holding my runner to the highs. This isn't, this isn't a good place to do it. And now we're a couple seconds from the open. The open could shoot prices higher or uh, kind of get this wild swing down. Um, I don't want to be in an open position or if I am in an open position, I want to make sure I'm at break even or break even plus one. <clears throat> but I still had my stop one tick below my signal. So that was that was a little aggressive. Um, and so off the open, we get this huge swing down. But when it closes back higher, I'm thinking, OK, if we break above, we might actually go and test the high. So I'm going to hold this. And then on this bar, I was like, OK, I don't think it's going to happen. This is definitely this is actually a range. So I was trying to exit. I was a little bit slow on the exit. And um, on that next bar, it ticked me out. So basically, I made five ticks and then I lost five ticks. So this was a break even trade for me, minus commissions. Um, so nothing much more there. I kind of, I felt this coming. I, I really needed to have scalped out of both contracts. Once I realized that it was, it was actually a range, I should have scalped out. That was a, that was a management mistake on my end. Um, so now that we have this range, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of data down here, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, well, we have a bounce here and we have a, uh, a bounce here. So I'm going to look at this as my range for now and see if I can uh, get another trade off the lows. Probably my midline is in there. Um, something like that. So here's, you know, like a little pullback. Um, I don't even know if I take this trade. I don't think I took this trade, but this is just a first entry to the high. I don't like how we're moving lower, how we're moving lower. So if I was going to do the failed second entry type trade, um, it's just a little aggressive because we're moving lower. Okay, it never, it never breaks above, so. Okay, now we're here at these lows, so I, I am looking for some sort of uh, bounce, higher low, bull signal bar, something like that around here. And we get that bull signal bar right there. Um, and I took this trade. The reason why is because we bounced at this, at this line. You can see how we broke lower than this low and it fails. And then to this high, that's a second entry. Boom, second entry. It's just aggressive back to that idea, like prices are steadily moving down. Um, it's aggressive to buy. I need to wait on a higher low in this situation. But, you know, I thought I thought I might risk it. I thought it was pretty high probability we'd come to the midline and hopefully this other side. So I just I, I entered on a limit. And then when it closed immediately back, in fact, this is a failed second entry long now off this high when higher once fails went higher twice, and it's about to fail. So here was kind of my second management mistake, although this one isn't too bad, but um, I should have exited. Once this breaks below, I need to be out. I need to be out. There's no reason to wait one tick below my signal bar on a setup like this. I could just exit right there once it breaks below. And uh, I did have my stop at break even plus one, but it, it never comes back, so... I couldn't even exit on the highs, and I got stopped out one tick um, below this signal bar. So with this trade, I mean, I wasn't too pressed or surprised. I mean, it was aggressive. That's all I can say. So I'm not, I'm not pressed off that too much. Um, oh man, I don't want to do that. Did we just, did we just show y'all? Okay, no, nah, we went back. Okay, here we go. So where were we? We were, yeah, we were here. Okay. So yeah, with that said, you know, uh, I should have waited, but I don't know. I, I thought it'd be a little aggressive and just snag a quick scalp. 
but it didn't work out that way. So here we go. We keep uh, moving lower. Um, and in a way, you know, this is a breakout pullback. We break outside the range. We close back inside the range. And now we're closing outside the range. So that's a breakout pullback. Um, at the time, I don't think I drew these lines. But now I get to review it and maybe see how I would have traded it better. Um, so maybe I'd put this line in there. And just, I guess I'm looking for shorts. Even though I have this range, you know, um, it is crucial that the third bounce failed. So really, this isn't a confirmed bottom yet. So I should have kept that in mind. Um, and then here we're getting some, some, some stack up. So I was kind of considering, okay, that could be a good look. You know, this is like a, a breakout of the range. Um, and we're coming back to test the, uh, the breakout area. And then off this, see right here, that's a first entry. When it breaks lower, that fails. Comes higher when it breaks lower again, that's a second entry, it fails. So I'm trying to get long right above that bar. And then we get this nice kind of like doji. I liked that. But there's a, there's a couple issues with this trade. I'm going to explain it. Um, I think step one, especially when I was trading it, um, I have my highs, I think, up here. Because basically what I did, I forget where I had my line now, but um, I'll just play it for what I see at the moment. Um, so if I want to do that, let me just see what happens. When I did it, I had a I had a range expansion, and it was pretty clear for me. I don't see it anymore, but um, basically, I just took this line and brought it down, and that gets us way down here. But I don't I don't think that's how I I was able to do it. But for whatever reason, I don't I don't see it right now. But regardless, this trade it it triggers right into that EMA. That's not a good look. Um, and then since we have this breakout pullback, um, I need to be careful going long. Although this is the reversal pattern and we're expecting it to be a range. Um, just a little aggressive. I mean, it, you can either take this as it's aggressive because we're going into the EMA or you can take this as it's a trade that just didn't work. You know, I mean, whichever way you want to look at it, it's up to you. But um, regardless, I took that trade and took one tick above and then it reversed. So, so um, you know, fuck, right? Um, but what I do see now is since we clearly have that breakout and then we pulled back to the line and we have this red bar, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing, okay, well, this double bottom becomes a single bottom. So that's first entry breaks above and reverse that's a second entry short just to these lows so a little aggressive but if you have this line here that's going to help you get in um and uh you could have taken the short just like a quick aggressive short this was this is where i got stopped out and once again back to kind of like a trade management thing once i saw this signal bar set up i could have just exited one tick or two ticks below. I didn't have to wait till down here to uh, to exit that. So I really can't remember how I how I ended up with my line down here, but I ended up with my lines really down here. So I was I was working off something more like this at the time, something more like that. Okay, that's what I did. So at the time, what I did is I I had this line, I just had it here like normal, off this bounce, off these bounces, and then almost that bounce. And there's like a failed breakout. And then what I did is um, when I did the range expansion, I just had it right there. And then so when I moved this line down, when I moved this line down, I already had it waiting down there. 
which, you know, that's kind of why I got in the trade, right? Because I saw it bounce off this line. So I was thinking, okay, we got the bounce off this line. Here's the reversal pattern. We're going to the other side. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't ready. There was still, we were still working this channel. So either way, this is our range. Um, we get a breakout. And then I entered right there. Now, typically, I don't, I don't take this trade typically, but what I saw was a swing higher than this swing. So that was a first entry, pullback second entry, and this is a decent uh, signal bar, and then the trigger bar is pretty good too. So I thought, you know, hey, I just lost, well, I had a break-even trade and then two losers. Um, you know, it's a little, it's definitely aggressive, but it's a second entry long. And we're at the lows of a range. You know, this plays out, break out, move to a new low. So we're expecting at least a range or a reversal. Um, let me just buy this and then put my take profit up here and see what happens. And that's what I did. You know, um, of course, I did have a management error. I changed I moved my scalp to two points instead of one point. Um, I was pretty confident we'd come up to here, but once again, you know, I probably shouldn't have. I should have just took my scalp. Maybe I could have done an extra tick, but I did an extra point. That's uh, it's aggressive. I'm not gonna lie. But I got the uh, I got the two point scalp, and then I had my I really had my um, my. Uh, runner I had my runner I think at the highs um, and I was just waiting I was just waiting to see if we'd come in come and fill it so I just waited that one out and um, get some stack up right there that's cool that's expected and then once we broke above then I moved my stop to one tick below this swing so I moved it right there so I had a I had locked in a pretty decent amount of profit at this point, and at this point, like up in this congestion, um, I'm break even. Like this this runner, this trade made up for all these losses. So at this point, I'm at least going to be break even on the day. So that was that was cool. And then we kept going, and then we had another kind of swing lower. So once it broke above, I moved my stop right there. So at this point, now I'm actually making some profit on the day. So that's that's even better. Um, and then you can see, like, this is a failed second entry, right, off this low, first entry, second entry, but we're on the wrong side of the channel. I didn't want to, I didn't want to add to my position on, on this side of the channel, so um, I didn't, I didn't add on, but you might have, given this context, you might have, I don't know, it's kind of aggressive. We get another little push. And then we make it up to these highs. And then I saw this doji bar. And then I noticed that we had so many, like, we had a lot of resistance up here. Um, you know, and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to wait for the highs. I'm, I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to exit here off these, off these highs, just one tick below. And so I exited. Once it broke below, I just exited right there. One tick from my high. I could have maybe got... An extra tick or whatever, but I wasn't I wasn't tripping. I I thought that was a fair trade. This ended up being like a uh, like a seven point runner. So that was that was a that was a really solid runner for me. Um, yeah, so I just exited off that high, uh, and then you know we start to get a pullback, which we've been waiting for the pullback. So that's nothing. You know that's nothing that we're not expecting or or something. Put a line right there. Uh, base, best case scenario is that you know we're gonna catch support off this EMA and then maybe make another leg higher, uh, and I try to find an entry on a breakout pullback or something. But um, I at least locked in some all my profits, you know, where we got the resistance. And you know, it, it kind of looks like a perfect exit, but to be honest, it was luck. I mean, to be honest, it's a mistake, right? Because my management plan was to wait until the highs, so. I don't have a reversal. I don't have a swing lower. Really, if I'm going to get stopped out, I need to be getting stopped out under this double bottom or under this swing. So I kind of changed my management plan mid-trade. Um, 
and it's justified. I'm not going to say it's not justified or it's the wrong decision, but it was just kind of luck that I exited at the highs because this thing pulls back. I don't know if it comes back up, you know? So at this point, for sure, you know, if you didn't exit here, you're going to exit when it broke below right there. And you're going to exit when it closed below the EMA. And then as a little bit more aggressive, you know, this double bottom, you could count that as a swing point. So when it broke below that swing point, you could have exited there. So there's like at least three exit signals. So somewhere in here, you probably would have exited. Um, so I really, I really lucked out on that. But hey, sometimes it breaks below and then keeps going. So I would have been like, oh man, I should have just waited for the highs. You know, today luck was on my side. You take it when you get it, you know. So right here, that's a first entry to the high, and we're kind of in the middle. We're not looking for longs. We want to go short, so we uh, we got to wait. Here's a lower high. Um, this isn't a bad trade. This isn't a bad trade. I think my my bias was still long, but this this isn't this ain't bad. Um, I don't know if it works though. Something tells me it didn't work, but let's see. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked. Um, but, you know, once you get this bar, see how that's a doji? So this bar inside of that bar, inside of that bar. So right there, eh, that's not looking right. You need an exit break even plus one, and you probably would have got that. Um, I think a lot of it is that we still have this trend, which I ignore the breakout and retest and arrange. But um, like I said, my bias was still higher, so I don't, I don't think this lower high is valid for now. Um, and then obviously when that, when that pulls up, if you really want, you can, um, you can make a little congestion area right there. And then you can see what, what you get off that. You know, you see it only ticked a couple ticks higher before it went in your direction, but that's the problem with going short. We're just taking trades too close in the middle, you know, it's just, it's just noisy, you know. Um, so then, you know, you kind of get a little second entry short there, but that's right into those lows. That's not a good place. Get a breakout, and then it pulls back, but it never breaks below. So now you can tell, you know, we're just going sideways, and then here we get another. So I'm just going to expand my range to there. And then we get some more. You know, now it's looking like, okay, we might get that retest on the highs, but I'm still using this, these smaller lines just to keep myself on the right side of the trade. Then you can see right there, it kind of get like a breakout. But that's, once again, you don't want to go long on this side. We're trying to get short, if anything. And then when we see this, this is a second entry short. This is a, uh, the low, first entry, pullback, second entry. So when it breaks below here, that's a second entry short. And it confirms it works in the context of our range because it's kind of like a breakout and we're trading back into the range. That's going to be the safer trade. And you just want to take your scalp and then maybe exit at this low or the midline, something like that. And you get that so easily. I don't know. It's a little hard to say that you should have a, your runner down here. I don't know if I was expecting it to just shoot down like that. But um, if you saw it like that, you know, it, you could have a, a, a contract waiting down here. I probably would have just scalped out here and here, something like that. Um, but then here, you know, you get that pullback. See, it like broke out, and now it's coming right back into the range. So, you know, just got to gotta take what it gives you. Here's a second entry short, but this it really triggered right here, and that's a doji. That's not that good. So you wouldn't have entered. And then here's a failed second entry short. But once again, you're going long on this upper side. It's not really where you want to go long, so I would have skipped that. Here's a um, like a lower high. You know, I just don't like that setup. What, I, what I'm going to do is wait. Maybe we'll get the failed entry or something. I don't like that. I don't like going short right there. Not not with all this congestion and stuff. That's not 
that's not going to cut it for me. And it takes off, you know, but it, it really wasn't even that clean of a setup. I, I don't think you would have. Um, I think it was too aggressive. And uh, it, it pushes through. So, you know, sometimes it goes without you. And then here you get a, uh, a move to that EMA. You see where we're getting our bounces, though. Kind of like a failed break lower, and it bounces. So this range, is it's holding. Um, get a pullback. Make another, another low. You know, at this point, I might even look at that as my new, as the new lows. Let me just bring this down a little bit. Somewhere in there. And um, right there, I saw this trade and I think this is aggressive, but it's kind of like a double bottom. Um, it looks like it's a higher low, but nothing breaks above in between these two bars. So it's not really a higher low. That's a double bottom. That's a pretty nice bullish bar. Uh, it's going to be aggressive to go long there, but given the range, I like the double bottom. I like the signal bar. You might risk that. And this is a good trade where, you know, I have my scalp and then I have a runner on the other side or, you know, in the midline or something. And uh, that was a nice trade. No pullbacks. That was pretty easy. So give it there. I want to give that a micro trend just because we're below and now we're above. I do want to see it swing past here, but uh, I just want to give it a micro trend. And you see how we didn't we didn't break above. That's a little double top. That's that's telling us something. See now we get this pullback. So the fact we didn't get above there, that's telling us something. That was the first entry. That's cool. We're not really looking to to buy that. Um, And then here's the failed second entry. Now, if you caught this on the way up, let's see, 77, you need a couple more ticks. So you one more tick, see how right there. So if you if you bought this on a limit, it's a four tick failure right now. Two things are going on. I gave this a micro trend, but it didn't deserve it yet because it didn't swing past a previous swing. See how nothing broke above here, you know? So it didn't swing past a previous swing. So in theory, you could totally trade this without that line. And if you take that line off, you see more of a range, especially when it reverses for the third time. See right there, it reverses again and it doesn't break above, that is definitely telling you something. Um, so if you were in this, you know, I don't know, you know, you might not have exited, and that's fair, but just the way I see that is I'm definitely looking at this and I'm saying, hey, something, something ain't right. In fact, this is a reversal pattern off this high, you know, went lower, it fails, and it fails again. That's a reversal pattern. So really, if yeah, you should exit because this is a reversal pattern. You need to exit break even plus one or break even if you can. Whatever it is, just make it ASAP. So just be careful of that trap. And it looks like it's going to give you another chance. It really looks like it, but it, it doesn't. And it, it would have stopped you out. But the only way you would have um, saved yourself on this trade is if you would have seen that reversal pattern, you know, off this high. First entry, comes back, fails, and even right there. So that's, you know, it's kind of, it isn't a clean reversal pattern, I'll, I'll say that. So if this is our high, ah, uh, went higher once, it fails, went higher twice, it fails. It's really not a clean reversal pattern. I can't tell if the reversal was right here or the re reversal was right here, but either way, when we have this triple top, one of these is the reversal pattern you know, you need to get out. So moving along, it's like 11.15, so there's only like 45 minutes left on the day. Now, once we break out, we're still in range mode, so I'm looking to buy it, but 
I need to wait on a higher low or something like that. So when it moves here, you know, we're not buying that. That's too aggressive. You, you would have got the scalp though, but too aggressive. And then see when it, when it pulls back and then breaks lower, that's a, that's a breakout pullback. So at this point, I'm just going to the most recent high, recent swing high. And I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a trend. Although, you know, it's like eleven it's eleven thirty, so it's still thirty minutes. You you you're probably maybe looking for trades. Um but at this point, there's definitely a trend going down. So I gotta respect this and uh I'm I'm shifting gears and I'm gonna start looking for shorts when we get another pullback. I'm gonna try to go short. Um and uh, here's the first pullback. Now off this high, this is a double top and it swung higher than here. So that's the first entry, it fails. Second entry, it fails. It's gonna be real aggressive to go short here. And there's only like 10 minutes left in the day. So I don't know if I trust that, but um, there's a setup. So let's, let's see if it works. See, it, it, it doesn't break below yet. So we're not in, we're still not in. And then see, uh, let's zoom it in. You know, here, it depends on how this broke below. If this went higher and then broke below, I really like that trade. If it broke lower, then went higher, and then came back down, you might have gotten stopped out. So I didn't, I didn't see how this bar set up. But if it went higher than came down, I would have still had my limit right there. And, you know, it's nice because you can exit by here just about and uh, you get a nice trade off that um, and I could see in the 12 o'clock I'm not I'll, you know I'm not let's just see so you probably still have a runner if you have a runner there's gonna be two targets there's gonna be a target here this is just the first most recent leg and then there'll be another target which is both legs combined those are both my targets. So all I need to do is see prices hit my target or set up some sort of exit signal or something. So it's trending lower. Um, don't quite get to this one yet, but it might here. And then here's like another failed second entry short. I'm not, I'm not gonna add on. I'm just gonna let that be. So your first target gets hit. So if this is your first target, you might be out. If you're going for the bigger target, you're still in. There, there's no reversal yet, but you probably have your stop um, one tick above this swing. So right there, and you're still ticking lower. And then you can see right here, see right here, we have this higher low. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really respect this. I probably am going to exit when it breaks above. Or what I'll do is I'll still wait to use this swing and see if I get a reversal pattern. See right here, like it broke above and then set up the second entry short. That's what I was talking about, where you might want to, you might be tempted to exit this because it looks like, oh, it's going to come back up. But oftentimes, you know, when it's trending, I like to wait for a reversal pattern. And see, yeah, you could have got right back down in here. You get another, another push down. And you're getting real close to this big target. See, right there, you, it, it's bouncing off your target. Boom, you would have been out. So that ends up being the trade of the day, low key. Um, you know, and depending on how you managed it over here, you, uh, you didn't have a swing higher. You have this higher low swing, but like I said, I, I'm, I'm going to wait for that reversal pattern. So... You could have definitely gotten this big target. That would have been a nice trade. That would have been a real nice trade. But that's it. That's it for today. Don't get too greedy. I mean, there's, let's see when we get that reversal pattern. Let's see if it comes. Just keeps moving down. And then see right here, once it starts closing above this EMA, psh, I'm out. I'm out right there. Um, and that's a swing higher than this previous swing. That's two exit signals. I'm out right there. If I didn't get out on that measured move, I'm definitely out right there. So 
You end up worse off trying to be greedy. I oftentimes, if I have a measured move, I like to exit wherever I get that measured target unless I see something that just spooks me or something. But um, that would be a nice trade. That's it. That's it for today. You know, today was one of those days. It's like, man, if I, uh, if I could have avoided taking this trade or this trade, any one of these two trades, probably this one. I think this one is the one that was too aggressive. I can understand taking that trade. But if I could have just skipped that one trade, I would have had a really nice day because this trade made up for all of my losses and then some. So if I would have just ex not been in this, I would have had a killer day. But, um, you know, that's how it goes. I, I heard from a really experienced trader, you know, that some days you're just making money back. The, the victory is not taking a loss. And today um, I definitely, I was set up to lose and you know, I had that one trade that just, and it was a discipline trade, you know, nothing about this was sketch. I didn't do anything sketch. I didn't add contracts. I mean, I did move my scalp a little higher, but you know, that was, that was all within my plan. So that was a really good trade for me, but that's how it goes. You know, you can take a couple losses and make it back, but just focus on the price action, focus on reading the chart correctly. And uh, the rest should take care of itself. So that's it. It's Friday. I can't wait for the weekend. I've been traveling for work and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, but uh, I'm finally back home, so I have some time to actually focus and stuff, and I'm going to be uh, doing a lot of reports this week and getting ready for Monday. So until then, hopefully y'all are studying as well. I will be, and I will catch you on Monday. Come on, heart.